Hi, I'm Nader. I'm a senior product manager at Apple. I'd like to give you a quick tour of macOS 10 Leopard Server. Whether you've set up prior versions of macOS 10 Server, or if you've set up Windows Server, you'll see how we applied Apple's legendary ease of use to simplify and streamline the configuration, management, and monitoring of your server. Leopard Server allows users in your organization to enjoy the benefits of rich services like file sharing, group calendars, wiki-powered websites, and more. Let me show you how. So when you get Leopard Server, this is the first screen you're going to be um, seeing. It's the welcome screen, and we'll hit continue. It's going to ask us how do we want to configure the server, and with Leopard Server, we offer you three choices. One is a standard configuration, and this is ideal for um, standalone uh, configurations of the server, uh, small businesses where they just have a server for their environment. The next configuration is the work group configuration, and this is similar to the standard with the difference that this work group or this server is going to be part of a bigger organization. So this could be a department in a higher education institution. This could be a, um, a graphics department within a Fortune 500 company. So that's the work group configuration. And the last one is advanced, where administrators and IT professionals can go in there and configure every little detail of the server. But for now, we're going to go ahead and pick the standard configuration. And we'll hit continue. We're going to pick the keyboard. Um, and then we need to provide the serial number for the server, which I've already done. Next, it's going to ask us to register the product. And this is uh, optional. So if you'd like to uh, register your product with Apple, you can provide this information. We're going to skip that for now. And now we need to go ahead and create an administrator account. This is the account we'll use to uh, administer a server. So we'll go ahead and uh, create that account. We'll give it a password. And we can even go ahead and customize our image here using the wonderful graphics capabilities in Mac OS X. So we use the Pop Art UI here. We'll hit Continue. So it's going to go ahead and create the account for us. Next, it's going to ask us to configure uh, the networking information for the server. So we'll go ahead and manually configure the server. And we're going to provide the IP information for the server and again, this is a standalone server, so this is a range of IPs that I have with my organization. Um, you might even request this from your ISP. But we're going to go ahead and provide that IP information here. It's going to go ahead and verify um, that networking information. And once it's done, it's going to come back and say this IP matches with this host name and computer name. And we'll click Continue. Uh, we'll also need to tell it the server which time zone it's in. So we're in Cupertino. We'll Click Continue there. Next, it's going to ask us um, if we want to back up the server configuration using one of Leopard's new features called Time Machine. And so uh, we'll choose to do that, and we'll store all those backups on our data partition. It's also going to ask us whether we want the mail service enabled, and I do. And uh, there's some additional options here whether I want to relay my mail through an external server, and I'm going to keep it uh, within my own server. And it's going to also ask us if we want remote access enabled. So if we have employees in our organization that want to access the services on the server uh, to be able to remotely log in and access those um, services, and we're going to say yes for that as well. And uh, it's, uh, Leopard Server can also be a target for time machine. So if you have Leopard clients, we can use Leopard Server as a centralized backup target for time machine. And again, we'll choose to say yes, and we'll have the data partition be the location where all those backups are stored. At this point, we can go ahead and even create user accounts for the users that want to have services on this server, or we can do this at a later time. So let's go ahead and add these accounts later using server preferences. And now it's going to go ahead, and based on all the inputs that we've uh, provided, it's going to go ahead and configure the server. It's going to go ahead and enable all the services for that standard configuration. And once it's done, it's going to let us actually log into the server so we can start using it. Now that we've provided all this information to the server, the server is going to go ahead and process that information. It's going to go ahead and configure the services for us. It's going to validate our network connections. And once it's done, it's going to go ahead and get ready to start up the server. So we'll go ahead and click Continue. And now we get this nice little summary screen that tells us all the services that are available for us. And by clicking on the Go button, we can go ahead and log into the server. Now that we've finished setting up Leopard Server, it's gone ahead and logged us into the admin account we just created. And it's launched server preferences so that we can go ahead and review or modify our settings. 
Now for those of you who have configured a server before, and even for those of you who haven't, you saw how easy it was to set up Leopard Server from scratch. Now let's look at server preferences and review our settings. So we can look at the accounts and server preferences and see there's our admin account. If we want to create additional accounts for our users, we just click on the plus and we can go ahead and provide the user information here. So it's going to go ahead and create the account. We'll create another account for Eric. And we can see what groups Eric's a member of, which services are enabled for Eric, as well as contact information uh, for Eric. Next, we have all the services that are configured for the server. And we see there's little green dots next to each one of them, signifying that these services are up and running. Our VPN service is not enabled yet. We just have to go ahead and configure that, and we can do that later. As you can see, Leopard Server allows for work groups of any size to get up and running quickly and easily. For more information, visit apple.com slash business.